Congratulations. Thank you. I want to know more about the missiles and the planes and anybody here except the general. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> general might know more, but that's about it. Please sit down, please. <laughs> Well, Mr. President, I really appreciate you coming to the Air Force Base, and we've uh, assembled a number of the leaders here in uh, the defense air, uh, industry in our state, and uh, we've got some pretty major national security treasures here in Arizona, Luke, sure. Luke Air Force Base being one, Davis Mountain, Fort Huachuca, uh, Yuma Marine Corps Air Station, Yuma Proving Grounds, uh, but we also have uh, amazing defense industry partners and local communities who are so supportive of our military uh, and who are partners in uh, producing everything that our warfighter needs in order to keep us safe. So you have representation from the different industries as well as the uh, organizations who advocate for the bases here. Well, it's great talent around this beautiful room. And thank you all for being here. Between the head of Boeing and the head of Lockheed and the head of Raytheon and the head of everything else, we have them all. <laughs> we have them all around. So thank you all for being here. That's an honor. Uh, I want to thank General Todd. Canterbury for the tour. That's pretty lethal weaponry. I've been, I've been going around the last uh, week or so, more so than ever. I've been saying we make the greatest, the greatest uh, military equipment in the world. Not even a contest. There's nothing close. And every other country knows it. And, you know, we're talking about something right now where a particular country ordered, you'll never guess who this is, about $110 billion worth of equipment. And I assume you'd like to keep those orders, probably. Yes, sir. Uh, but if you don't, Boeing, Dennis, you can, you can let me know. Make things a lot easier. Uh, but uh, you make the best, and that's why you have it. Also, uh, Luke Air Force Base, I've heard about it for so long, so good. Uh, top of the line, isn't it, huh? Well, thank you very much, General. I also want to thank our roundtable participants today. Secretary Wilbur Ross doing a great job. All those trade deals we're making, Wilbur, right? Representative Martha McSally, who is uh, a special woman. And I met her when she was in Congress, and we worked together well. Uh, she's a great pilot. A lot of people told me she's really a talented pilot, as opposed to one that just about made it. She made it easily. And uh, she likes a specific plane. We won't tell them what the plane is. <laughs> they don't make that plane anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's right. But uh, she's been fantastic. Also, Representative Tom O'Halloran. Thank you very much. Where's Tom? 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 Okay, over here. What are you doing over there, Tom? You can join us, even though you're a Democrat. <laughs> Representative Debbie Lesko and I, we're, Debbie, great job you've done. Thank you. You've done a great job. Thank you. We worked hard a couple of years ago, and we did. now yeah. your your district loves you, right? So it's, uh, it's I pretty sure good. hope so. They better. Four elections hey. in one year. Yeah, that's, that's you. true. Yeah. You set a record. Well, that's welcome true. to my district. Well, thank you very much. It's thank great you. to be here. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, Secretary, Deputy Secretary Patrick Shanahan. And Patrick, thanks. Great job. He's a good he's a good purchaser of equipment. I hope you find that he negotiates well because if he doesn't, I'm gonna be very disappointed. What do you think, Dennis? Is he okay? He's tough. Huh? He's tough. He's well, good. I, I would expect you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis is Boeing. <laughs> so thank you very much, Patrick. And it's been great working with you. And we have. We've made some we've made some big purchases, some good deals. A uh, little bit better than presented, and, and it's the best. It is there's nothing like the, the stuff. Secretary Heather Wilson. Heather, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great job you're doing. Undersecretary Ellen Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. You're keeping busy, right? Absolutely. Good. I think so. And all of the outstanding representatives who join us today from America's aerospace and defense industry, civil society. I mean, if you look at the civil society and the business society, it's been uh, it's been pretty amazing what's happened over the last two years. Mm -hmm. And you're all doing well, and we're doing well. The country's doing well. We're setting new records on jobs. Uh, we've got every category, just about every category is a new record or very close. And a lot of them work for you. A lot of them work for your great companies, and they are great companies. Thank you very much. This incredible state is home to six major military installations, more than 30,000 military personnel, and thousands of defense companies. Arizona's military industry supports 76,000 jobs, that's big, and creates 11.5 billion in economic output. 
So what state would be a comparable or or larger? Is it is it larger? I, I mean, Texas does three. great. Three. I think we're number three on the number list. Number three, all right. But knowing we're you, you'll be our weight. she'll be number one very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's doing so well. They all know. <laughs> The United States must always invest in a strong military, and it's been very important for me. Uh, the military has been uh, vital. That's why we had Wilbur $700 billion approved last year and $716 billion this year. And, General, everybody that passes me from the military thanks me for the new equipment. Uh, we were very depleted, and we're not depleted anymore, although the, the equipment's pouring in, but we're not depleted anymore, so that's fantastic. We've secured record funding for the armed forces. Uh, the funds will support new fighter jets, ships, tanks, thousands of new recruits. Uh, we also gave something very important, and that was a pay increase, the first in 10 years, a nice substantial pay increase to the people that deserve it so badly. And uh, one of the things that was very important to me is to totally modernize and rebuild our nuclear arsenal, and we're doing that. And we will very shortly uh, be in a position where there won't be anybody close. Not that we ever want to even think about using it, but if we're not going to use it, the best way, the only way, is just, that's the way we don't have to use it, right? So we're doing a lot of work on that. And uh, in a very short period of time, already we're superior, but we will be at a level that nobody, nobody competes with. Earlier this month, we released our landmark defense industrial base report, which outlines new ways to strengthen our defense and manufacturing base. American-made military products are more effective, more lethal, and more precise than any other equipment in the world. And I've been going around saying that. And we have a lot of countries that are dying to order our stuff, but we don't like them that much, so we don't let them order. But overall, Maryland, I don't think you're complaining, right? And that F-35 is special. That is a special that's a special fighter, right? It's great. So we have to ensure that our warriors, our brave, brave warriors, have the resources that they need and deserve, and that our allies and partners continue to purchase American products. We want them to purchase our products. They're the best products. Joining us today are several inspiring leaders who all share my commitment to supporting our military, and they're making America more prosperous, more competitive, secure, and proud. And we really do. I mean, I know these people pretty well. I knew them a little bit in private industry. I know them a lot from what I've been doing for the last almost two years. Can you believe that, Dennis? It's almost two years already. It's we just fast. gave him a, an order for Air Force One. Uh, Air Force One now is 30 years old, and it was time. And yep. they wanted to do it for the last two administrations. They never got it done. We got it done. Thank you. Yep. And uh, hopefully, you're going to speed it up. Going okay. <laughs> fast. And it's going to be incredible. Actually, Boeing is doing it. It's uh, going to be a new color system, red, white, and blue. And it yep. looks phenomenal. It's uh, the right color system. And uh, if it looks as good as it does in print and in the models, it's going to be fantastic, right? So I hope you're uh, moving along. That's moving along very fast yep. here. We're moving fast and continuing to focus on getting it delivered. Very good. Very good. So I just want to thank you all for being here. And if you have any questions, I'd, I'd like uh, — maybe before that, I'd like to introduce Martha McSally, uh, say a few words. Uh, she is very special, uh, a person that has taken the whole country by storm. They're talking about her all over the country. I don't know. I don't want to make you feel a little bit like, oh, gee, what's happening? But they're talking about you all over the country. And I fully understand. And I got it a long time ago. Uh, I think you're going to be very, very successful. This is a non-politician who is brilliant and brave and became a politician and was very successful. Her, her area, her district loved her. And now, as you know, as some of you know, she's running for the Senate in Arizona. She has a very, very strange opponent. Uh, I, can, I have to tell you, Martha, that should be easy, but you got to get in there fighting, yes, right? Huh? Capacity, That's yeah. right. I know. Official is right. <laughs> so anyway, please say a few words, Martha. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. I really appreciate you spending the day here and uh, taking the time to come to Luke Air Force Base. I mean, this, uh, this base has a long history here in Arizona of being part of keeping our country safe. Uh, and we have such tremendous partners here around the community in, in the West Valley uh, that are very committed uh, to making sure 
that this space is protected and that our airmen are protected. And we've got the fighter par uh, country partnership uh, as well. That they, They're just amazing, the partnership there. We've got the same kind of partnership in southern Arizona, southern Arizona Defense Alliance here. Yeah. It's just, in Arizona, I can't, I mean, I've been stationed in a lot of different places. Uh, but Arizona is special, and uh, it, and I guess everybody might say that, but I really feel that in my heart uh, because so many people here have served, so many people came here to serve, uh, or even came here to work at one of these companies, and then they choose to say like, this is where I want to be, this is where I want to stay, this is where I want to retire. Um, but there is this, uh, you know, partnership amongst the communities uh, to support our troops and our bases and our defense industry that is really unmatched around the country. And I think, you know, everybody nodding here will tell you it's, it's really special and I think it sets the example uh, for the rest of the country. And that's everything from, again, you know, I'm thinking about it, you know, I've shot some of their missiles and I've <laughs> used their rescue <laughs> oh, yeah, equipment. Yeah. We could go around the room. I mean, <laughs> in the defense industry, I don't want to leave anybody out, but uh, we, you know, they are, Patriots wear civilian clothes as well. Uh, and many of these industries have chosen to locate here. Uh, also, Arizona is a great state, right? It's a great state to live, it's a great yeah. state to relocate your family, you know. Uh, so all that comes with uh, that has just been so critical for us here in Arizona. And, and these representation, these leaders who have people who are coming here with their families to be a part of the team, uh, which is they're partnering us to equip the warfighter uh, to make sure that we keep the country safe. So it's not just our military who's uh, he's doing that, it's the engineers every day that are finding new capabilities for us that are working at each of these industries. Uh, you know, I just, I just visited uh, yesterday, just the, the idea of like, we're gonna break through on some of these things and we're gonna provide better capabilities to be able to go rescue downed airmen and the commitment uh, that, that they have is extraordinary and that's at every, every company here. Uh, and, and these organizations, uh, UMA 50, uh, SEDA, I mean, they, they're doing everything from helping our deployed airmen's, uh, you know, families or, or all, the, all the services when they're deployed, you know, get the royal change, you know, help with daycare, I mean, you name it, the things that they do to step in where the military has some legal limitations and the civilian community, civic society steps in, it, it's, it's really extraordinary. So I, I just want to leave it at that. I'm so grateful uh, for all of you to be here. And thank you for coming Well, it's a great, this, it's sure. a great state. We love Arizona. General, could you maybe Talk about Luke a little bit, because it's, uh, it's got a big reputation. Yes, sir. It is an honor and privilege to lead the more than 5,600 men and women of Luke Air Force Base. Our mission is simple. We train the world's greatest fighter pilots here. Luke Air Force Base is responsible for training about 95% of the United States Air Force fighter pilots between the 944th Wing and our 56th Fighter Wing. And it is an honor to use the equipment that these men and women provide to us and the taxpayers provide to us to use this equipment. We're not going to fail, sir. And your father was the boss here, too, right? Yes, he showed sir. me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> they looked like twins. He showed me a picture. And uh, he's still around, he's still healthy, and he's still telling you what to do, right? Sure, <laughs> every, every night I get to see brief, and he's anxiously waiting the phone call That's tonight, right. sir. <laughs> you, you give him my regards. Thank you, sir. Will. Marilyn, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what's going on with Lockheed Martin. Well, Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this important conversation, especially right here at Luke, where this is the largest F-35 base in the world and growing. We have, you know, with the aircraft that are coming in here, you, you highlighted how important the capability is for our nation and is the best capability. But the study that you referenced, I just want to thank you for commissioning that. Yeah. I think it's very important because American Aerospace and Defense is a, is a major part of the economic strength of this country. And it, you know, when we look at 2.4 million jobs in aerospace and defense and a trade surplus of $86 billion, we know it's important. But your study that you commissioned uncovered that we do have fragility in the supply chain. We do have capabilities that we need to bolster. And so we're very pleased to be working with your administration, with the Department of Defense on those recommendations that came out of that. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. So on the F-35, has the stealth gotten even better? Because it was always considered extraordinary. Has it, has it really been upped, or is that at, at that same level, would you say? Well, I would say, sir, that it, you know, we're at the point where we've delivered over 300 aircraft, and, and the aircraft, we're out of the, the initial design phase right. and the system design phase. Now we'll do upgrades to the aircraft with its software and other things go over time with, that the U.S. government will commission uh, industry to do. So we'll keep it ahead of the threat. That's yeah. the goal in, in and every, it is ahead. In every it's fashion. Great plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dennis from Boeing. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. President, for being here as well. And uh, I think, as you saw earlier, you had uh, you saw one of our Apache helicopters That's here as well. Uh, Another great product produced here in the state of Arizona. And I had a chance to go down and see our team in Mesa earlier today. 
and uh, really proud to support our servicemen and women. And uh, uh, training for the future as well with the new uh, TX trainer that will be coming online. We're looking forward to supporting our U.S. Air Force customer there as well. And I want to thank you again for the emphasis on the strength of the industrial base here. And you referenced the report, as did Maryland. And investing in aerospace and defense is a great thing for the country, economically, from a national security standpoint, and in particular, some of your policies around uh, tax reform and regulatory reform, sustaining the gains there, mm -hmm. really important. That's allowing us to all invest and innovate in defense. Uh, I think we have challenges in the workforce side and, and our supply chain uh, strength for the future, areas where we're yeah. going to continue to now work together. Now you can solve those challenges. You, you got it. I think the work we're doing together on workforce development and training uh, is very effective there. We've got teammates here from our supply chain, Marty McCurdy here, who runs uh, Spirit Electronics, one of our small businesses in our supply chain here in Arizona, is a great example of investing in that supply chain. So uh, we want to thank you for those policies. I know you made the missiles to the extent I'm looking outside, and I was very surprised, actually. Boeing, it's, yep. a lot of them had the name Boeing on them. I didn't know <laughs> that was a great specialty of yours. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, that's a big area of investment for us as well. So things like uh, the JDAM, which is used right. uh, significantly around the world, uh, very effective uh, for our servicemen and women. Uh, small diameter bomb is another example. So you saw some of those today. So again, we're honored to do that on uh, behalf of our U.S. men and women in, uh, in uniform. Uh, we take that job very seriously. And it was mentioned earlier the importance of our veterans and investing in our veterans. So thank you for what you're doing there. Uh, yeah. Veterans in the workforce as well is a big deal to all thank of you, us. Dennis. So you're doing a great, great job. talent there. Some incredible things you're coming up with. Thank you thank very you. much. Would anybody like to say anything? Well, we're all gathered together. Anybody have any complaints or any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> or would anybody come up with any great ideas? Yes. I would, love to, yes. Thank you. I would thank love to say thank you. It's so refreshing to have a president that is so strong and supporting the military and the veterans. And um, we appreciate it. The American public appreciates it. I mean, thank that's you. the number one mission of government is to protect its people. And you're doing it. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Debbie. That's really nice. Appreciate it. Anybody? Yes, Mr. sir. Mr. President, you know, we do your uh, encryption equipment in the White right. House. That's uh, right. Voice and data. That's right. Um, but uh, like I was saying to Secretary Ross, uh, you know, we have, we can only keep a lead so long if all of our stuff's getting stolen the moment we design it. Yeah. And the cyber threat is not being properly addressed. And there's capabilities even in the products you so have. So what would you do about that, Chris? You're right. Yeah. And uh, they should have been doing this for 15 years, and they haven't been. Yep. So what would you, your company is a great company. What would you do about it? Well, so we already ship network encryptors. We've embedded capability in those encryptors to pick up the signatures of threats and attacks, even the classified signatures, and store them safely. But we're not turning them on. It's so not why don't being we, used. why don't we get somebody that you would recommend, and let's bring them into government, and let's do it the right way? Because, you know, it's such a... Uh, a specific kind of a thing. It's uh, great knowledge involved. You can't just hire somebody off the street and say, hey, congratulations, you're in charge of Indeed. cyber. But the NSA has the capability uh, to understand that. And, they have uh, some we very have, good people. And we have industry partners like Viasat and others that do products that can do things like that. Together, we can get that stuff turned on. When you put this, when you turn it on, it lights up like a Christmas tree. The threats are coming every day. I mean, it's probably more than your normal traffic. And, and we're, we're getting compromised every day. So uh, do we have the equipment? We definitely have the knowledge. Where are we on the scale of knowledge right now, would you say? Uh, I, we're very good at tracking the threats, but we're also very stingy about disseminating the information we already know about the threats. Right, right. And that, that's, what, that's what the fear is in the intelligence community, is, is to let some of that information live in these boxes that we believe are secure. But that's the only way we can defend all of our installations against these kinds of attacks. Well, I'd like to talk to you about it because I, I agree with you. It's very important. And uh, there's great knowledge that you have from your company. But there's and, — and others here have that great knowledge. Very important. Cyber. And I hear more and more about cyber. And we have the brain power. We have potentially — I mean, there's nobody that should be able to even compete with us with what we have just around this table. So, uh, Jerry, any of you, if you have any ideas, let us know. We'll do something, because we're going to do something. We've already started. But I'd rather start it from this table than any other table in the world. Does that make sense? You understand that? We have the brain power right around this table. So, good. Thank you, Chris. That's fantastic. Would you like to say something? Oh, sir, I <laughs> leave, it to the, uh, leave it to the community leaders here and their time. You're doing a great job, though, I think. Everyone's saying.
Everyone our job is uh, our job is to keep the country safe, sir. And the F-35 is part of that. We like winning, <coughs> and the F-35 wins. It's a great plan. That's win. awesome. Yeah. Great plan. Yes, sir. When is Boeing going to make one to compete with it? Or maybe <laughs> <start> <laughs> 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 they just gave us the TX. You know what? Though you do have, you do have that. <laughs> yeah. we're, in the, we're in the fighter and business you as well. Do have we, some do, good, we do a lot of work together. And you so. do have some yeah. good stuff. I have to yeah. tell you, some <laughs> really good stuff. But you are going to do one of the super stealths, right? Yeah, we're working all together on uh, you know future technologies and, and what will happen next and next generation capabilities. Good. Next so generation. I think it's important that we continue as a country to invest in that innovation. I agree. And next step capabilities. And we're doing that jointly with our with our customers. Well, you, uh, yes. Excuse me. I, I just say that you know you make a very important point about how national security also drives economic security and and on the F-35, today it supports 194,000 jobs across the United States and 1,500 U.S. suppliers. So not only is it got the high capability that we need to keep our citizens safe and, and to work with our allies to make sure that we have protect and safe, safe and secure environment for our, our people, but it also brings a lot of jobs. And, even here at Luke, I think we have over 400 industry professionals, and that's growing to 700 in the next couple of years, that are supporting the F-35 on the base here. That's just a microcosm of all the jobs across the country. Right. I would just add yes. to that, that another example, even in combat vehicles where the Army is recapitalizing its ground forces, uh, the investments that are being made in the next generation as well as the modernization. And you like Eight, what we're doing? Do you agree with it? 18,000 jobs, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Alabama, Oklahoma, all around the country uh, as you go through the supply chain. So it's it's a model that's being repeated over and over again. And you think we're doing the right thing? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, right. Securing right. the interest of the United States, absolutely. That's very good. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm Amber Smith, the President and CEO of the <coughs> Tucson Metro Chamber. But more importantly, I am one of the founding members and the current president of the Southern Arizona Defense Alliance. Good. And to the Congresswoman's point, we do exceptionally well at supporting our military. In fact, in Southern Arizona, we even have the statistics that was it 93 percent of our citizens support the six mm -hmm. installations in Southern Arizona. Mm -hmm. But what's really exceptional are the public-private partnerships, and you see that around this table. And I want to thank you for um, the leadership you have shown in recognizing some really incredible workforce development programs in which we are placing veterans into jobs in the aerospace and defense industry. And I was talking to uh, Secretary Ross about the back-end technology of this, of which you've recognized that civilianizing those HR codes of military will be able to better place the billions of dollars of exceptional talent we have in our military into these jobs to help immediately address some of these workforce issues and then be able to build our pipeline as well. So thank you very much for thank recognizing that that exists and supporting our pilot program in Tucson. <coughs> thank you, Amber. Thanks. That's very nice. Thank you. Wilbur? We're going to help publicize the event, the product that's coming out of her workforce. Good. Development. That's great. Oh, great. It's a very interesting that's idea. Great. We also got some very good suggestions before you came here about space. So there are a couple of recommendations I'm going to carry forward to Vice President Pence. For the Good. Space Council and hopefully. So we're doing a new force, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. How does the Air Force feel about that? But we're doing a brand new force, and it'll be the Space Force, and everybody's excited. Whenever I mention it, everybody goes crazy, and they like it. And that's what it's all about, I guess. You know, those planes are all beautiful, but we're now going into space, and that's for defense. We're not just talking about sending rockets up to the moon. We're talking about for defense and for <coughs> offense. So I think pretty soon it's been very well received, even in Congress, bipartisan. And pretty soon we're going to have Space Force, so that'll be number six. And this way it can be specific. We'll have a great genius like yourself, comparable, maybe not as good, but pretty good. <laughs> and uh, we'll have uh, an extra person sitting on the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and uh, it's going to be a full, full force. It's going to be very important. I think it's going to be a, a big contribution, something very necessary. Go ahead, Wilma. So we had good interchange about supply chain management, about all kinds of issues, and we especially addressed the problems of foreign procurement and things right. that commerce can do to help them solve those problems. So I thought it was a very, very worthwhile roundtable. I don't know how the rest of you felt, but we had very good interchange. Very good interchange. And the concrete suggestions uh, will come from it. 
Good. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, what do you think? Sure. I think a lot of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to start with, I think, where uh, Representative Lesko was. Thank you. Uh, you've made us stronger. Under your leadership, we are stronger. And, you know, with Congress's support, we've got a budget that makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. When you look at where we've come in terms of readiness, we now have the munitions that we, did, we lacked before. Yeah. Ships are sailing. Airplanes are flying. And the most important piece is we're training more. Yeah. Um, something that probably most people here would, would also echo is your advocacy on foreign military sales is huge. Okay? That has not at it's that It's hurting level, me right now. I know, but... <laughs> right it, now it's yeah. hurting me with these people. Yeah. But your advocacy is, is significant for this industrial base. <laughs> and I think the most important um, aspect is the budget will allow us to modernize so that we can compete. The modernization is the single most important work that we have to get mm -hmm. to undertake, and we're undertaking it. And, uh, you know, as you've counseled me, we need to be good stewards, <coughs> buy smart, not over-specify, and I think we'll, we'll do that. But thank you very much. And when you say compete, I would like to say so that nobody can even come close to competing with us as opposed to just competing because what I'm really doing is putting us in a position where there's not going to be anybody even close. Right. And that's why we're, again, we're looking at all of the planes, all of the weapons, all of the rockets, all of the everything, including, obviously, the nuclear. You hate to even bring up the nuclear because it's, uh, it's such an incredible threat. But we have no choice but to do it because others do it. It'd be nice if nobody would do it, right? Dennis, it would be great, but it doesn't seem to be that way. So I just want to thank everybody at the table. Would any of you folks have a question for anybody at the table? We have the greatest talent in the world at this table. Uh, anybody have any questions? May we ask you one question about Saudi, sir? There's been a reaction, or there's been a statement from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I just saw it. Just came out. What was your reaction to that? You well, I think it's a good first step. It's a big step. It's a lot of people, a lot of people involved. And I think it's a great first step. Uh, you probably know uh, that very fair person, Reuters. And you probably know that uh, you are. You're very good. Very, very good. Uh, we have uh, a tremendous order. Uh, probably the people around this table have the vast percentage of the $110 billion order from Saudi. We have $450 billion. But on defense, we have $110 billion. And I would say almost 100 percent of it would be sitting right around this table with the great companies. Raytheon's here, too. Uh, just great companies. Uh, it's very important. I don't, I don't want to tell them. I, I don't want to look over and tell Marilyn or Dennis, uh, by the way, uh, we're going to take $25 billion worth of sales away from you, because that would mean a lot of jobs. It would mean a lot of everything. And Saudi Arabia has been a great ally. But what happened is unacceptable. We are going to see they, uh, they've arrested, just for the people at the table, a large number of people having to do with the event that took place in Turkey and the consulate, the Saudi consulate. And uh, it's a big first step. It's only a first step, but it's a big first step. Do you consider it credible, their explanation for that? I do. I do. I mean, it's — again, it's early. We haven't finished our review or investigation, but it's uh, — uh, I think it's a very important first step, and it happened sooner than people thought it would happen. Yeah. But the notion that there was a fistfight, and as a result of the fistfight, Mr. Khashoggi was killed. Well, I don't know that that was. I don't know that that's a notion. I mean, that was that's a theory that's being thrown out. I don't think anybody said that, but uh, they're saying there was a fight. But that's a theory that was put out. But they're going to be giving us a full report. But they have arrested a large number of people, and uh, good first step. Yeah. Are you concerned that they the leadership there lies to you or other members? No, I don't think so at all, because they, they weren't out front with me in terms of, you know, what happened. Uh, they, this is really uh, — we just got this report from them, and uh, you got it along with a lot of other people. No, I think that uh, we'll be talking to them. We'll see what happens. We may have some questions. We do have some questions. And as I told you, I'll be working on this with Congress. Congress is very interested in this one, and we'll be working with Congress. But I would prefer — uh, if there is going to be some form of sanction or what we may determine to do, if anything, uh, because this was a lot of people they're talking about, and people pretty high up. 
But I would prefer that we don't use as retribution uh, canceling $110 billion worth of work, which means 600,000 jobs. I know it sounds easy and it sounds good, and a lot of people have said, oh, let's just, let's just not sell them $110 billion. Or I guess you take it a step further. Let's not sell them $450 billion, which is the largest order in the history of our country. I went there to get that order. Saudi Arabia was my first stop. And everyone thought that was unusual. But I said, I want to order — I want you to order a tremendous amount of stuff, right? Everything. Your stuff and everybody's stuff. And uh, Wilbur was there. They ordered $450 billion. There's never been anything like it or close. The last thing I want to do is say, we're not going to — you know, we're not going to supply you with that, and therefore we're going to cut — I guess if you add the whole thing up, because just for the military, it was 600,000 jobs. So now, if you're talking about that was 110 billion, you know, you're talking about over a million jobs. You know, I'd rather keep the million jobs, and I'd rather find another solution. But this was a good first step today. Okay, anything? Yeah. Mr. President, uh, Lindsey Graham said he's very skeptical of, of the Saudi narrative. Are you do you share some of that skepticism too? And do you intend to speak with the Crown Prince or the King in the next day or two to get their side of the story? I will, yeah, before I start making those statements, I'm going to speak to the Crown Prince. And I've spoken to the King. I want to speak with the Crown Prince. And, you know, I think we're getting close to solving a very big problem. And, and again, remembering the people around this table know it better than anyone. Martha McSally knows it better than anyone. They've been a great ally in the Middle East. Uh, we need them as a counterbalance to Iran. And so it's not the simplest solution. It's not the simplest situation to be in. But I think we're uh, I think we're doing very well. I think we've come a long way in a short period of time, and it'll get solved. It'll get solved. Okay? Yeah, please. Sir, um, do you trust the Saudis to carry out an impartial investigation, given that the Crown Prince is kind of in charge of it, or do you think a third party should be involved? Well, we have third parties involved. We're involved. We're involved. Uh, Turkey is involved. And I wouldn't say they're exactly friends. I would think that Turkey and uh, Saudi Arabia, they're not too friendly. And uh, Turkey's involved, and others are involved, frankly. I mean, this people are not happy about what happened. But this is a very big uh, turnover when you look at the number of people that they say were involved. That was a very big — it was a very important thing that they did. And they did it soon. They did it — you know, we thought it was going to be the end of next week. They did it soon, which I think is very smart. But, no, I would — I would have to say uh, they have been our ally. We've had great relationships with them. This is a horrible event. Uh, it has not gone unnoticed. Okay? Mr. President, can you speak to the family separations policy, where you're at on that? The Arizona has been one of the places where this has been Yeah. Uh, well, we have on. Mexico has really stepped up to the plate, which is very nice. Uh, I've said to him, look, you know, We've been very nice to Mexico. We have the worst immigration laws in the history of the world. They're incompetent. And, uh, in fact, we have a great Democrat here. Maybe we could negotiate some immigration laws <laughs> while you're here. Huh? You'd be very good. You, I would like to do it with, because you, you know what you're doing. It's, uh, we have uh, just a horrible situation with the laws. The laws don't allow us to do anything. And then we have the judges that are let's say that are giving us decisions that are horrendous. And hopefully, they'll be overturned in the Supreme Court, or sooner. But uh, I don't know if you know what's happening, and, and probably a lot of the people at the table don't know what's happening, because this just happened. But people are coming over from Honduras. They have, like, 5,000 people, Honduras and Guatemala, El Salvador. And some of these people are hard criminals, hardened criminals, not good people. And they broke through in Guatemala. I said, look, we give you hundreds of millions of dollars, Guatemala, and you're going to stop those people from coming. And they tried, and they broke right through, and they broke through the fences. And Mexico is now really fighting a very tough situation. Mexican soldiers have been hurt — badly hurt, in a couple of cases. But I very much respect the fact that Mexico is willing to do this. But these are some bad people coming through. They're, these aren't babies. These aren't little angels coming into our country. 
and going to, you know, go to work for Boeing and go to work for Raytheon and for Lockheed and do a great job. These are some hardened criminals coming in. And we're not letting them in. We've got enough things right now. We're just not letting it happen. So Me Mexico, on their southern border, is fighting them right now, literally fighting them. And these people are fighting. And they put all the women and children up front to show you how brave they are. They put all the women and children up front. And it's a terrible situation. And if we had laws, I could sit down and you give me a group from the Democrats, I could sit down and in one hour, we would solve catch and release by getting rid of it. You know what catch and release is, Dennis? They walk over. If they put one foot on our land, we catch them. We then take the information because we have — it's impossible to bring them to a court. We have to bring them to a court. So we bring them to a court, but the court's never there because you don't have enough judges. There aren't enough judges in the world. If you've got every judge in the world, you don't have enough judges. So you catch them and you release them. And they go into our society because you're not allowed to release them back into theirs. And that's one of the better ones, okay? It's just a horrible situation. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the visa lottery, where we take people by lottery from countries. Now, just, you know, from a business standpoint, do you think they're giving us their finest? We get some real beauties out of the lottery. These countries, I mean, they're not stupid. They give us people that they don't want, and we have to take them. So I could sit down with Democrats and work this thing out in one hour. And we need a wall. We have to have a wall. We're building the wall now, but we should build it very fast. We should build it — frankly, we should build it even higher, because these people, it's incredible. They can scale them. They can do things you wouldn't believe. But uh, we have a wall. It's going up. But we should be able to build that in one year. And we could do it in one year. So we'll see what happens. I think this is going to be a real wake-up call for the Democrats and for the public. And for the public. People are very angry about it. Very, very angry. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. What evidence do you have that these are hardened criminals? <coughs> oh, please. Please. Don't be a baby. Okay. Take a look. Okay, just take a look. Look at what's happening. Look at the Mexican soldiers that are laying on the ground. Take a look. These are hardened — I didn't say in all cases, but in many cases, these are hardened criminals. These are tough, tough people. And I don't want them in our country. And neither does our country want them in our country. Okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.